All right, welcome back. Uh, we're looking at the Genesis uh, or the core set plus the first three packs of the Genesis cycle for the Rat Runner tournament that we're doing currently as of February 2021. And so the the next faction we're on here is Wayland with six cards released over the first three data packs and um so let's get into this now i'm going to tell you my current feelings about wayland before we even get started right wayland in the core set has an unbelievable kill combo that that if you can pull it off is one of the funnest things to do however once the runner figures out what wayland has in the core set i don't believe there's hardly any chance there's there's relatively no chance for wayland to pull off that combo once they're running a solid criminal deck and they're a competent pilot and and that's just my feelings on it and and so moving into that perspective and understanding that and understanding that i don't necessarily think uh from these three data packs that that wayland has the cards they need to be a glacier style deck they're still predominantly relying on that kill combo i don't feel like i'm actually kind of spoiler alert here i'm kind of sharing my thoughts up front as a whole for these cards here and we'll see what uh if if i'm wrong from joel who's oh i forgot to introduce joel aka brogue leaders with us today once again I, I guess i just assumed he's he's with us for all these and didn't introduce him but anyway getting back to it i don't feel like uh they ha have anything added to their card pool specifically to really make that combo that much better or make them an adequate uh glacier style deck to the point where it's not that they haven't got amazing card they don't they got a couple of really good cards here that's starting to build them but i don't think they're the best cr corp deck at this point when adding the first three data packs i don't think they're the best core deck uh by anything that's added here and i think they still got the same dilemma of the runner being able to pretty much shut down that kill combo probably 90 95 percent of the time what do you think brogue leader am i on track here or, or you think i'm wrong i think that they're not the best corp deck right now but i do think that the first card we're going to discuss here project atlas makes them way more consistent um at that kill combo um at the point that the kill combo gets a lot weaker because of plascrete um because project atlas is a three two that you genuinely do want to overscore um like one atlas counter is incredible two atlas counters is ludicrous um like um and if you have an atlas counter you are very scary mm. because it means that that your kill combo is massively more consistent because you just have to find the piece that you don't have yet you don't have to find the like you you're not waiting on uh All the, the second scorch because you just have to find the second scorch with this or yeah. find the sea source with this or whatever um and you can also use it to defend agendas in weird ways later on but uh i don't think that's really relevant right now like i think you can you can stop a hail mary to uh take a hostile takeover at your deck or something but um uh, otherwise i don't think that play is as relevant until much later down the line but but yeah like atlas is is an incredible agenda that you desperately want to score early <laughs> yeah no and, and you're right I, I i i did not take that into account but i was just thinking about the strength of plascrete capri carapace at this point right that card right there has really put a, a real challenge for the kill combo uh, at this point in in the card pool but this definitely like you said gives you the opportunity to go and get it if you can pull it off and talking about a terrible time trying to actually win the game scoring seven points with in the original core when you had to have five one pointers in your deck at least right that was absolutely miserable now you can get uh cut down that uh cut that down just a little bit and run three of these and and then 
some pro pro rex probably and and then whatever ones you want to do depending on your strategy i still feel like if you're looking for the kill combo understanding that money could still be a problem you probably want to run the posted you probably want to run the posted at least one or two posted bounties to try and be able to get the double advancement and so that you can just pull the other scorch you need and still have a chance to pull off the kill if they've got way more money than you right yeah maybe um i'm not i've not really looked at sort of building um a whale in, in this specific pool although i think their agenda suite doesn't really change that much apart from napd contract swapping in for stuff but uh, and like global food swapping in for stuff mm -hmm. but um but yeah what what would you have you'd have three atlases you'd have three hostile takeovers because it's money and it's a fast advanceable so it's kind of a no-brainer. So right. that puts you on nine right. points. Um, then, um, let's say you slot two prior X. Do you slot three prior X, maybe? I don't know. I almost but, do, especially when I'm running those ones, because I don't want my agenda density yeah. to be so high, you know? Yeah, but then, then you're in a, a real kind of weird swingy situation where you've got a lot of 5-3s in your deck that could like make or break your game plan depending on whether whether they emerge or not yeah um so it's a it's a little it's a little fiddly but you probably do run three prior x to get you up to 18 and then i guess two posted bounties or one private security force to, uh, to make up 20. Mm -hmm. um um it still ain't great but yeah yeah it's it's still not it's still not ideal um definitely it gets it gets better with food in the way that all of the every corporate agenda suite gets better when global food comes out mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah um but um uh but yeah it's as i say i don't think that wyland is at its strongest right now um and uh um like i think consistency is the main reason for that but it's like consistency in terms of money. Like you, you can only slot six transactions right now, um, and so you're not really getting the value out of your identity that you can when you can slot like nine to twelve transactions mm -hmm. um, later down the line. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't count them out because I think Atlas can enable some uh, some really strong rush play um that uh they weren't able to do in the core set yep now I, I totally agree with you on that it was a slight oversight i know how good project atlas is stated as being so project atlas one of the best agendas in the game i think most people would agree with that uh and i doubt yep now now caduceus here I haven't spent much time using Caduceus myself. I've done a little bit, but every, I think a lot of, from what I hear, a lot of people rave about this one as well. And so I can't really, th I haven't had enough experience with it mo uh, recently. So I'm going to turn this one over to you and let you tell me about uh, kind of what it, what the benefits of it are and why people like it. Well, it's only three to res, so that's all right. Um, <laughs> um I face check it's a reasonable tax like if you don't have your mimic down yet then this is uh gonna be um a three credit credit swing either way for for the first trace mm -hmm. because like if it's unsuccessful you've paid three and if it's successful the corp gets three um and then and then a trace two for the end of the run which you kind of don't want the corp to have that three extra from the previous one right um to to pay into because that makes it just basically a trace five that the court doesn't have to care about mm -hmm. um like that's i think that's those are decent numbers on those traces um like the its main downside is that it's a three strength sentry which means that as soon as mimics down it's two credits yeah um but like you have to find your mimic um I mean, it's it's also awful to go through with Ninja if you're still playing Ninja, um, like because Ninja starts at zero and three is a hard thing to cheat your way to. Yeah. Um, 
So, um, so it kind of has the same value as Itchy against Ninja. Like mm-hmm. it, it just costs a fortune. Yeah. Um, but um, but the main utility of Caduceus is that it's cheap to res and it has a really decent face check. Like it's not it's not a devastating game winning face check, but it's a strong face check. Um, that like could turn it into a free res that is then like a two credit tax forever which is a bit like pop-up window um, or um, can end the run when it matters like like that's not a bad piece of ice yeah no I'm with you so I don't have much more to add to it than that it's definitely like you said it's a good beginning of game ice to get down there so all right, well, let's look at Woodcutter here. This is another one I really haven't uh, spent much time at, with. Has uh, when does is Woodcutter any good now? Does it get good in the future? No, I don't think good is the right word, but like this is part of a suite of can be advanced only while rest cards. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I don't know if it's really a thematic suite. I don't think Tyrant it has anything to do with Woodcutters. Maybe it's like a elaborate fairy tale reference. I don't know, but um, the uh, can be advanced only while rest is such a hamstring, and also it's two strength and four to rest, so it's kind of rubbish anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, but yeah, that's such a hamstring that it's basically just not worth the paper it's printed on at the moment. Eventually, you could slot this in a 10 in Institute deck, and the benefit of that is that you can take advantage of 10 in's ability so that you don't have to worry about whether or not the card can be advanced whilst it's on rest. Because <laughs> mm. you can place advancement tokens. Like, you can, like... Um, you can actually advance this with things like Kaguya at the moment, um, because Kaguya just places advancement tokens. Um, oh, actually, no, I think Kaguya does have the. Let me have a look. Kaguya. It has to be. Oh, no, Kaguya has the condition of the cards that can be advanced, so no. Uh, yeah. Since this explicitly states that it can't be advanced um, in that situation, yeah, Kaguya can't. Um, so basically, there's nothing that you can d- use right now to get around that ability. Mm-hmm. And this card is only playable if you can. <laughs> right. I mean, I guess the ultimate the ultimate goal with this card was would be to have like five, six subroutines of do one net damage. So they had to pay that to get through. Lancing a card that many times. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm with you. That's that's real hard at this point, but there do, there does come a Wayland ID that gives you stuff for advancing uh, a couple of them that deal with advancing, right? Uh, yeah, there's a uh, there's a uh, sad lonely stepchild um, because we built it coming fairly soon. <laughs> I think that might be in the next the next set, um, which is you get one recurring credit to advance ice with, yeah. which is embarrassing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> on NBN's had two recurring credits for things that they do yeah that don't cost clicks um and um uh and then uh later down the line oh I can't even think I suppose there's yeah there's Builder of Nations much much later I think out of the purview of uh Ret Runner um, Builder of Nations uh, actually gets some good mileage out of advanced cards, but it doesn't let you advance cards. Is the thing mm. um, like it just it just gives you better value from them. Um, and like there's cards like Priority Construction again outside of Red Runner, I believe. I might be wrong about that, but um, but that lets you place a bunch of advancement counters on a piece of ice, whether or not it can be advanced. When you install it, it's like a motion for ice, um, which uh, would be quite good with Lucata. But again, it's too strength. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you're clicking to put and and spending to make the runner have to spend the same amount as you've spent on it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and the first and the first time you've spent four, and they've spent nothing, and nothing happened. Uh, so it's it's really rubbish. Yeah, 
That stinks. I wonder how I wonder how FFG made decisions like how they ended up just it's missing being quite the mark. conservative in the in the early design. I think I think they were uh, I think also the way that people played Netrunner before they kind of knew how to play Netrunner mm -hmm. um, meant that like a lot of the testing around these cards would have been um, quite slow, methodical play, like really, really slow rolling agendas and and just advancing ice just because it says you can, rather than thinking about the actual value of it. Right. Um, so. <laughs> Um, like once it kind of enters this competitive environment and people start optimizing, um, this stuff falls out as like really conspicuously bad. Um, <laughs> and because people, people weren't really thinking about it in those terms at that time. Yeah. All right. Let's keep it moving just cause you know, but I, this is all fascinating stuff to me here. Another one. I, I actually, it, this is basically your show here because I haven't played really with any of these cards. I might have dabbled with commercialization a little bit, um, but still nothing nothing major besides a little bit of commercialization. So here we go. Power Grid Overload. I actually got to read this card because I don't even know what it does. Play only if the runner made a successful run during his or her last turn. Trace two. If successful, trash one piece of hardware with an installed cost equal to or less than the amount by which your trace strength exceeded uh, the runner's link strength. So basically, I would have to, to get rid of a Plascrete, I've got to beat your trace by three credits to pull this off, pretty much. Yeah. Um, on the flip side, it means that uh, if you're threatening to get rid of a Plascrete, the runner does have to pay into even quite a low trace here mm -hmm. like you could you could trace you could add three to this trace and uh <laughs> and the runner has to pay five yeah <laughs> Which... so so it does it does sort of but like, you paid one to do it though so you're really yeah only... you did so you're only you're only one up in in terms of the actual trace math you are you, it is the same as gaining a credit yes um but um but yeah, it's a tool to get rid of a Plascrete. I think you need to be wealthier than Waylon can reasonably be with six transactions right now. Yeah. Um, but, like, it's a tool to get rid of a Plascrete. There are better tools to get rid of Plascretes later, but I think this is one of your best right now. Yeah. Um, the, like, the two that spring to mind as ways to play around Plascrete later on are you mid-season them for a boatload of tags, um, and so, and you can triple scorch later, um, so you don't have to worry about Plascrete when you're triple scorching. And the other is, uh, you run them into a Shattered Remains, uh, which works surprisingly a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you also get um, Taurus eventually as well. Right? Taurus is wicked ice, yes, Taurus is great. Um, but obviously that means that that uh, that subroutine has to fire, which is sometimes an ask. Yeah, but but it's a it's a high strength piece of ice, so sometimes not. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, pa like I don't think power grid overload overload is great, but you do have a means to get out of out of fast grid lock. Basically, is what this card means. Um, it wouldn't be bad splash for MBN because they because uh, of their ability. Twenty one, yeah, yeah. They could they could easily have the two from their ability, and uh, you know who knows if they could have the money to get rid of it. But like you said, they're broke too, so it's. If you're playing tag and bag, it it couldn't hurt to slot one of these sure. because Plascrete is going to ruin your day, and everyone's going to be slotting Plascrete. Yep, and if nothing else, it's another opportunity for you to fire a trace uh, with your ability for MBN. So, all right, commercialization. Now, this one, obviously, once we get, well, like you said, the ID that gives you a cre reoccurring credit for advance and ice is terrible. I didn't do the math until you mentioned it earlier, but that does make sense. So that would be a time where you'd want to use this. But when does, uh, w at what point does Wayland really start to get the uh, advanceable ice thing, thing going strong? Well, ice wall is fine now. Like, and the main reason Ice Wall is fine now is because 
like when you res it, it's already good because mm-hmm. um, it was cheap and it ends the run. Right. <laughs> so it's done its job, and maybe maybe you can get into a situation where advancing it is worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, but but it doesn't need to be. It's not like woodcutter where you're compelled to advance it for it to do anything. Yeah. Um, um, and it's not like Hadrian's Wall where you've already spent a fortune of it and it's already a high strength piece of ice. So why would you bother? Um, commercialization um, is an interesting card because it's it's terrible. I mean, I've been I've been saying up until now repeatedly that Whalen only has six transactions that they can put in a deck, and that's technically not true because tra- commercialization is a transaction, <laughs> so they can totally put nine transactions in. But but what is this transaction? What it does is it refunds uh, the money that you've been putting into advancing ice, which you're never doing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So. Yeah. And even like like I don't think Wayland gets advanceable ice right until um really until Order and Chaos hmm. um when they when they get the um uh space ice suite, uh, asteroid, wormhole, nebula and Orion, um which have which like get a discount on res for yep. every advancement token on them. Um and uh and then that sort of paradigm of three advancements is a good number of advancements kind of then carried forward into the very good advanceable ice that they got later on morseless hortum um and uh, colossus right um but until those um and then they've also got Mago and odadu which are both good as well um but like until until order and chaos advanceable ice is either a weird thing that you do in a janky 10 and fast advance deck or a, a thing that you never advance but it just happens to have a, a good face check um, right. or just be a good gear check um which, so which you're, means you're not so, getting, yeah you you know, you're never getting money out of commercialization like um you would have to have advanced a piece of ice you like in uh, building a better world, you play commercialization and it's clicking for a credit, or uh, if you've advanced an ice wall, it's clicking for two credits, but also you've drawn a card, so it's not. Um, or you advance an ice wall twice and it's clicking for three credits, but herein lies the rub. Actually, you've advanced an ice wall twice, uh, which means you, you now have um, a wall of static on the board, uh, and then you have discounted the res cost of that wall of static belatedly <laughs> right By Unle- unless you can get it out unless you can get it out early and then click for, and then score three of these but effectively they're only a two you're getting two be- more beanstalks you in just, your day. You, yeah you just it, the value proposition here is so poor yeah. and it's it's interesting like commercialization is the name of this card and later down the line there is a card called mass commercialization which is also a zero to play uh Whalen uh uh operation um which gives you which, which is gives you two credits for each advancement token on all ice <laughs> and that card yeah is a is a card that you can play yeah like that that's the cornerstone of an economy but commercialization ga- gain one credit for each advancement token on a single piece of ice is utter trash <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's all right. Not worth it. Note it's just, to sell. It's just, it just gives you the money back that wasn't worth spending in the first place. Yeah. At the cost of a click. That's it. You're really a tough on these cards, man. <laughs> I appreciate it, though. Because somebody like me, I wouldn't have known. I'd have been like, is it good? Is it not good? I feel comfortable, you know, thinking that it's not good now, you know, and I'm happy about that. I don't have to sit around and ponder for hours on commercialization to wonder if maybe there's a place for it. In, in in my deck right now so all right last one here amazon industrial zone whenever you install a piece of ice protecting this server you may immediately res it lowering its cost by three now this seems like this to me is getting ready to prepare um wayland for a glacier style situation right yeah that's where you'd really start to see your money get back if you can uh, install 
three three ice on this thing after the fact and even then you're giving up your position by letting them know what the ice is right so that's not great it's like the proto ginger city grid um which ends up being an hb card um um and this is only one influence so you can put it in an hb where it'll probably do you more value because you're also getting your etf credit for the install mm. um like I kind of want to try this and like make a sort of janky ETF glacier before that's a good idea. Um, using Amazon Industrial Zone, um, but like I don't think it's a great card, but I think it's crying out to be in a jank deck, and someone will make it work. That's that's what this card is. Hmm. I, I did slot this in a blue sun once. It was a stupid idea, but I did play it. Um, and it did win at least one game. <laughs> oh, I could see that. I mean, like you said, you're pulling it back anyway for the money. And like what yeah, you're talking about. basically means all your ice has been stock royalties. <laughs> yeah. And and like you're saying that um, in the HB deck, if you go ahead and install on the on one server, right, a remote server, if you were to install three Heimdalls over a, uh, over a relatively short time, I mean, that server just got really nasty, though. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, like, it, this doesn't this doesn't threaten face checks, but it threatens tax. Yeah, and it lets you res that tax for cheap. Yeah, and that's decent. Like, mm -hmm. that's I, I don't. It, it is just like Ginger City Grid. It's it's like the runner knows exactly what you've put there, and you've put it there for a significant discount, um, and that means that you can put a lot of it there. Um, and I think I think there's a deck for that somewhere. Yeah, I might have to keep this one in my back pocket here because yeah. this one seems like it could be a little fun though. The thing is that the four res cost is so prohibitive. Like that's that's so expensive because now you need to put two down. Like you need to um, immediately res two pieces of ice to make that worth it. Yeah. Um, like to to actually net credits out of that exchange, and then you're not actually netting that many. Um, so you do need a lot of money up front to make it do anything. Um, and then you've also got to factor in that you're still paying the ice install cost. So the more ice you put on there, like it's still going to cost you money. That's true. Um, um, and, and then so the worst part it, is, and, and the worst part to me is that it's a, it's a trash cost of two, which means you really got to, you really need to yeah, get some ice on. fast because otherwise they're yeah. going to just completely annihilate yeah. it and yeah. you've spent four for nothing. Mm-hmm that's it so all right well let's i think yeah we're doing pretty good let's switch over here and uh, try and talk about these other three here um for the well actually it's four we got four oh, wait a second oh they got five now we're just gonna do a separate video on these uh five uh neutral corp cards real quick and then we'll be ready to get into runners so anyway that is it for this video here i think we kind of talked about where wayland's at up front did you have anything else after going over the cards that you want to say about where wayland's at or anything here no not really i think i think plaskery is such a debuff to to wayland and they need um they're they're hurting for an ability to play around it mm -hmm. which power grid overload doesn't quite there but project atlas gives them some speed which is kind of their best bet right now i think you can still win games with wayland it's yep. just hard yep 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 totally agree all right well we will see y'all next time hope you hope you enjoyed and thanks for uh doing this with me uh brogue leader all right